The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, here's a creator that you, you hear a lot of, but you don't, I, I mean, a lot of people have their different opinions on, usually, you know, based on one kind of non-comics event, the big one, particularly for people who follow a lot of the crowdfunding stuff, but, you know, in terms of the actual comic work, you know, it's, it's uh, Mark Wade has continued to step-by-step, step, you know, make progress. And keep in mind, this is a guy who was, it was always unclear, full blacklisted, partially blacklisted, semi-blacklisted, somewhere in there at DC or uh, however there was going to be, they weren't going to hire him. And uh, now here he is, uh, you know, getting more and more uh, from DC. Why is that? So viewers asking this question, it says, um, does Mark Wade's recent comic success at DC represent your ideal comics publishing strategy? All right. It's a thesis. There goes, dear perch, we perch, dear perch, peewee perchington. Okay. I'm not sure I like that one, but, uh, but all right, fair enough. With the last couple of days, DC announced that Mark Wade would have two new projects at DC this year, Superman, the last days of Lex Luthor, a black label miniseries and world's finest teen Titans, presumably an ongoing, well, yeah, <laughs> ongoing by today's standards. Uh, these projects are on top of Wade writing Batman, Superman, World's Finest, and the Dawn of DC Shazam ongoing series. As a relatively newer comic reader, I can't help but think that Wade's position at DC fits what you, Perch, would call smart business. Wade is a well-known, well-regarded writer from the 90s who has come back to start writing new series that invoke an older era of comics. The World's Finest titling, Shazam and his more wholesome nature, and now Super Mad Mini with an easy-to-get-on-board story concept. Not only is he writing stories that invoke an older era, but he's also branching out from the success of World's Finest to a spin-off series uh, in a more natural way than artificially inflating a comic line with uh, restarts and unnecessary concurrent series, X-Men, and the multiple Robin series. As an older creator and former editor, he has respect for the source material, he seems to be giving what fans like, and DC is giving him more projects. It feels like Wade's current success aligns exactly with what you talk about all the time with getting the older, more experienced creators to create books and its sales being a reward for higher quality output. Uh, there's a little subnote here. It says, as an important note, I don't know the publication numbers for World's Finest. However, the series was initially built as an ongoing if fans continue to support it. It's still publishing a year in, so I think it's fair to assume it's a success so far. Even if the industry should have a higher standard, this is the bar right now. Yeah, World's Finest is doing fine. It's, uh, you know, it's not the top of DC's charts, but it's it's maintaining an audience. And maybe one of the bigger things that I've heard about, or how at least DC is looking at it, is that it's not bouncing around. So the title is predictable. And it sounds like a very, like, who cares about that? Well, in publishing, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, just just having people come back to the book month in, month out is uh, is very helpful. Now, Dan Moore is also on that book, and I think that's a huge draw in a lot of cases, but, but be that as it may. Uh, the mail concludes and says, uh, despite whatever controversy said in the past, it seems as though most comic fans have responded well to World's Finest and aren't complaining about these announcements. I could be wrong in misinterpreting what's going on in your videos, but I think his elevation within the DC publishing lineup fits well with your arguments. Thanks for reading. Well, thanks for writing. Uh, yeah, I, I think with Mark Wade, if you look at the work he's doing at DC, now, first of all, take away all the, the history, the past, kind of various shenanigans, all that kind of stuff, both online, uh, back at his business, all, all these different things. The one thing Mark Wade is able to do, at uh, certainly, and he's doing at DC, is if you just read the comic, meaning if you do, you know, God help you, uh, you don't go online, you don't go to Twitter, you don't see all the rest of this stuff, you just, you know, your engagement with comics is your LCS and the comic. Uh, then when you pick up World's Finest, you pick up these books, it feels like, and I mean this as a compliment, a very meat and potatoes DC superhero book. You pick it up, you read it, there's an adventure, the characters are acting like they're acting, they're not trying to introduce wacky new alterations to those characters, they're not deconstructing them down into a, you know, blubbering psychotic mess. Uh, the, the characters are having adventures. And it is, this is what I talk about on this channel a lot, of just you know, you don't have to do it with every single title, but you ought to do it with some. 
Because the, the reality is, if you're in the big two, you're not writing just a story out of nowhere. You're, you're being part of a franchise. And being part of a franchise means there's, there's a lot writing on it beyond kind of your story. First of all, you're going to be gone from the comic at some point, and the story's going to go on. Uh, you're also standing on the shoulders of people who wrote this book for, you know, decades, tens of decades. So you've got that uh, tens of decades, so lots of lots of years, I guess is my point. So I think if you're an artiste, if you're a writer who really wants to kind of deconstruct, get into psychological trauma, got to do some of the things that Tom King brags about, then, you know, the answer is you, you don't belong doing mainstream franchise comics. Superman's strength comes from being able to tell a very predictable story. When you go into McDonald's, you expect the hamburger to taste a certain way. You know, the Big Mac, you, you don't, if you order a Big Mac and you, you, you know, at the drive through and you drive away and, you know, five miles down the road, you start eating your sandwich and you discover the Big Mac sandwich that you ordered is actually fish and uh, the bun has been replaced with, you know, crackers. You're going to be like, what the, what the, what the hell is this? This isn't a Big Mac because the Big Mac has meaning to you. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Captain America, these titles have meaning. It doesn't mean you can't change them, but you have to change them gradually and carefully because they're part of a portfolio. It's not like an independent comic where you can do anything you want. It's your universe and you know anything goes. But with uh, with those comics, you have to you know you have to adhere to kind of the classic, or at least you should. And this is where um, you know if you look at at Batman and and you look at these characters and then you look at uh, Wade's success. Wade's success recently at DC is he's come in and he's he's done he's done exactly that. He hasn't come in and tried to upend the world or just you know let's let's really explore how Batman you know is uh, actually a, a terrible capitalist and and you know he should be taking all his money and putting it into the foster system rather than you know crime fight. I mean, based on Wade's Twitter feed and his interviews and other things he's talked about. I think he believes in a lot of things in the progressive kind of social justice world, but his comics don't read that way, or at least they don't read like the characters have become mouthpieces for his Twitter. They read like themselves. And sad to say, that's, that's, a, that's a gift these days, because a lot of people seem incapable of doing it. So Wade's had success because he's basically come in and said, here's a uh, portfolio property, Batman, Superman, Shazam, etc., and I'm going to deliver, you know, to expectation. I'm going to deliver a classic Superman story, a classic Batman story, whatever happens to me. I'm going to, I'm going to deliver a story that, that fits who these characters are. That's it. And, um, you know, I, I, it doesn't need to be fancier than that. Uh, and by the way, it, what's funny is I've talked about this with comic creators and writers and editors and others, and I can always tell the conversation with many of them. It kind of wince when you say kind of just tell a classic story because it's like, well, that doesn't sound creative. It sounds like you just bring in any bozo to do that. Well, as we've seen now, it, it you know they brought in lots of bozos. Many of them suck at doing this, so it's it's not so easy to have somebody come in and just tell a core you know book that fits the character and is iconic and matches the matches who these characters are. That's uh that that's that's kind of Turns out it's kind of difficult, both because it takes some talent to actually dip into that stuff and write those core stories. And I think Wade is very good at that. He's very good at kind of being able to take kind of the true essence of a character and, and run with it. And by the way, I think this is an area where if you are the Kurt Busiak or the Ron Mars or the uh, or Peter Davids or the people who have written kind of these characters before iconically in the past, I think, uh, you, you know, I think we are going to see more work. Heading to, the, uh, heading to them. Because the comic companies, I think, are waking up. At least DC certainly is. Marvel, it's, it's hard to tell what, what they're doing exactly. But, but I do think you're going to see comic companies migrate to, let's just, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's just tell the classic story the way that, um, you know, uh, kind of what our readers expect a little bit. You know, certainly surprise them. It's, it's not like you, you tell a boring predictable story not at all but you know maybe you know the flash should be the flash and maybe wolverine should be wolverine and we and we should stop trying to 
kind of tip the world on its head. Everything you thought you knew about the character was wrong. And how could you just let, let people build up kind of their feelings about the character as they do know them for a while? How would you do that? It does feel like uh, DC's figured that out to some extent and, and Marvel's on the way, but, and, and certainly they're going to continue to, you know, want to manipulate that. But it like, like it's, it's a perfect example of, Look at what's going on with um, with World's Finest, where Wade is is writing kind of Batman, Superman, and they're very, you know, archetypes of themselves works. And then, uh, you know, a, you can compare and contrast a little bit with some of the stuff that uh, the Marvel has done. It's like, hey, what do we do with the Hulk? I don't know. Do we have him be a kind of a a big outsider where humanity fears him and? And uh, yet he's still a hero, but he's prone to rage because that's his thing. Or no, no, let's ha- let's send him into space with a, like a mental Hulk mind construct that kind of a, a, you know mechanical robot on his like. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Now, granted, you could you could deconstruct and do different things that it could work out. I mean, Al Ewing's uh, Immortal Hulk worked out, but I would argue even there, you know, they're like, oh, he did something completely unexpected with the character. Did he though? I don't know. The Hulk kind of was originally billed as, you know, a monster comic. There was certainly some some levels of horror in it. You know, the the Hulk was wrestling with these bigger things. The Avengers were after him. I mean, in many ways, I think Al Ewing's Hulk, the Immortal Hulk, was pretty, you know, pretty classic character. I mean, certainly told in a more adult way and told in a more sophisticated manner than, you know, the Hulk has to go beat up the leader. You know, it was, it was, it was told in a different way, but it was I think that probably fit more than what Donnie Keats did later, for sure. Um, I, I I think that Mark Wade's success at DC does indicate a level of, uh, look, a lot of these creators, and, and look, a lot of these creators who are quite good at it, I mentioned you know, Busiak, Mars, these guys uh, who, you know, had big runs on Silver Surfer and, you know, the, uh, the Avengers and other kind of core comics. If I'm them right now, I would, first of all, I'd be, sterilizing my Twitter and Facebook feed to just not look crazy. Like that, like get, get rid of all the, like the super trolling, the like, ah, screw all you guys. Just get rid of all that. Even though several of the editors undoubtedly agree with what you're saying, just make yourself as non-controversial as humanly possible. That's, that would be that, that's what you should do. And then from there, I think just this show that you could write really solid stories, turn in scripts on time, be, be boringly reliable. I think that's that's the key to success. And I think for all of uh, Wade's past and history, and he certainly has a reputation for flipping out on people and all the kind of stuff he's done. And he's done plenty, particularly with, you know, it. it is, uh, I think it is striking the fact that despite all of those things, when, you know, he saw the opening at DC and he just wanted to put his nose to the grindstone, if you look at the events leading up to World's Highest, some of those stuff, he he just pretty much, you know, kept his eye on that ball and ran with it. Worked out. So, you know, it's a lesson for other creators. Like, hey, maybe maybe just make yourself look more sane and boring and kind of focus on just telling really iconic stories. Now, granted, the editors have to agree and let you in the door for that. But, I, I mean, way to have a reputation for doing batshit crazy things on social media. And the fact that he's able to kind of position into this new space in his career, I don't know. I think that's a should be a wake up call to a lot of people. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you reading World's Finest? Are you reading these books? What do you think? Where do you think it all goes? Let me know. Uh, let me know. And uh, what other creators would you like to see go to this place? What characters would you like to see really just handled in this very classic way? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.